Ukraine begins to destroy metallurgic enterprises inside Russia after oil refineries. New details have emerged of the Ukrainian drone attack on the Mikhailovsky mining and processing plant named after Varichev in the Kursk region, according to Charter 97 media outlet. This plant supplied raw materials to the Ural Steel Company, which in turn was a supplier to the armored vehicle manufacturer Ural Wagen Zavod. This event confirms that after a series of attacks on oil refineries, Ukraine is targeting metallurgic enterprises, the agency writes. The first drone hit a fuel tank and a fire started, the company said. The Mikhailovsky Mining and Processing noted that there were no casualties. TASS writes, when doctors and firefighters arrived at the plant, the plant was attacked by a second UAV writes MASH. Governor Roman Starovoit said that no one was injured in the second attack either. Mikhailovsky Mining and Processing is one of the largest iron ore mining and processing enterprises in Russia. It belongs to Metalloinvest Company of Alisha Usmanov. In 2019, Metallo Invest published a release stating that the mining and processing plant produced a batch of iron ore pellets to the Ural Steel Company. As Proect wrote, Ural Steel supplied sheet metal to the manufacturer of tanks and other armored vehicles, Ural Wagen Zavod. In 2019, Ural Steel also belonged to Metallo Invest. The company was sold in 2022 to Zagorsk Pipe Plant. In December 2023, the Mikhailovsky mining and processing was already attacked by a drone. Then the UAV damaged the power supply lines of one of the plant's facilities, but the plant itself continued to operate. Metallurgic enterprises have likely become a new target for Ukrainian drones in Russia. On February the 24th, the Novolipetsk metallurgic plant, the products of which, according to the project, are used for the production of weapons, military equipment and machinery was attacked. Since the beginning of the year, Ukraine began regularly striking Russian refineries, with which Bloomberg linked the reduction in oil refining at Russian refineries by 380,000 barrels per day by mid-February. Other fuel infrastructure facilities are also being attacked. For example, four days ago, a drone apparently tried to attack the strategic Rushi oil depot in St. Petersburg. France considering placing special forces in Ukraine. The French government is mulling, sending a small military force directly into Ukraine to serve as instructors for Kiev's armed forces and as a deterrent to Moscow, newspaper Le Monde reported citing its sources. The paper did not disclose the number of French military instructors that could potentially be authorized to cross into Ukrainian territory, but reported that their ranks could include some conventional units. According to Le Monde, France's special forces were also involved in training Ukrainian soldiers in neighboring Poland and in escorting the nation's arms deliveries to Kiev. They have, however, always stopped at the Ukrainian border, the outlet added. The training France would like to provide to Ukrainians on the ground includes handling air defense systems, the report said. Kiev's surface-to-air weapons installations are frequently targeted by Russian forces, it explained, adding that the presence of French soldiers or those of other nations would potentially protect certain areas of the Ukrainian territory. The French government allegedly views such a troop deployment as a way of posing a strategic dilemma for Moscow, the paper said, adding that it could constrain Russia's targeting and strike capabilities. In particular, it may prove to be essential ahead of the arrival of US-made F-16 fighter jets scheduled to take place later this year, the French Daily added. So far, France has denied that any of its troops have been present in Ukraine during the conflict, the media outlet said. Ukrainian general criticized President Zelensky for Zaluzny. Reserve General of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Serhiy Krivanos criticized President Volodymyr Zelensky's desire to dismiss Valery Zaluzny, the commander-in-chief of the Ukrainian Armed Forces. He stressed that Zelensky did not behave responsibly in making decisions. According to him, it is impossible to renew the personnel in the armed forces of Ukraine because it is difficult to find experienced people like Zaluzny in Ukraine. Ukrainian Commander-in-Chief Valery Zaluzny 
has reportedly agreed to be Ukraine's ambassador to the United Kingdom and will leave Ukraine within days, lawmaker Yevgeny Shevchenko said. I would like to say that, according to my sources, Zaluzny has agreed to be the ambassador to Great Britain. He is highly likely to go there and we know that those who leave the country as ambassadors are political retirees. None of them has ever returned to their former positions. This is Ukraine's tradition. I hate to disappoint any Zaluzny fans, he said in an interview with Vadim Karasev, director of Ukraine's Institute of Global Strategies. According to the lawmaker, if Zaluzny opts to stay in Ukraine, he has every opportunity to achieve great things in politics after resigning. If he opts to be ambassador, he is not a politician any longer. 100% if he stays in Ukraine and begins to build a political career, he has good prospects. Very good prospects. Shevchenko said, adding that Zaluzny's resignation could be expected on February the 8th or somewhere around there. Ukraine's media and social networks continue speculating about Zaluzny's future. Some say that his resignation stems from the failure of Ukraine's counter-offensive in the summer of 2023 and Zaluzny's political ambitions. A number of foreign media outlets confirmed reports about Zaluzny's dismissal, citing their own sources. Music